Welcome back to the Share Parenting Podcast, where every mom deserves to feel sure of her parenting. I'm your host, Sammy Bell, creator of Share Parenting and author of Share Parenting, Building Blocks to Create Their Best Childhood. Here on the podcast, we address the issues that make moms question themselves or their kids, and we discuss creative solutions that meet the needs of each unique mother and child. Let's dive in. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Welcome back to the Share Parenting Podcast. Today we are here with Allison and she is going to share some really insightful work that she has been doing with moms. And before you think this is just for kiddos, remember that our modeling is the most important thing we can do for our kids. So stay tuned, listen to this awesome approach to emotions and emotional understanding and intelligence and enjoy. Allison, would you introduce yourself and let us know a little bit more about your program? Sure. I am Allison Brown and I work with moms um, who have been spending all their energy on trying to manage everyone's emotions their own emotions, their kids' emotions, their spouse's emotions, the mother-in-law, the neighbor, and everybody's emotions fall on our shoulders. And we're trying to make sure everyone's always feeling good. And I'm trying to help us stop that because I was there for so long and it was miserable. And um, when I finally started, instead of managing the emotions, really tuning into what they're there for and how they can actually help us and changing my perspective on how I dealt with my own emotions to do with the emotions they were feeling by responding to their emotions. Um, It made it so that I suddenly had the energy and the freedom to go and do things I wanted to do. Instead of putting all my energy into managing how everyone else felt, I could create the kind of life I wanted, which surprise is better for my kids, better for my husband, better for everyone because we're making something great instead of reactively just trying to stop everyone from feeling. Yes. I think that's so important. Um, We, we are, we're trained to try to stop emotions and there's no stopping them. (laughs) And they're there for a reason. There's information to be learned in any emotion. And so I think that's part of what resonated when I, when I first met you talking with Beth was yes, like this is, this is something that a lot of us maybe didn't learn as kids, but we can learn it now and we can turn around our family. So it doesn't feel so overwhelming to be in this role that we chose and we love. And it, it makes us feel empowered. Um, our, my group is empowering moms to uplift kids because that's the goal. We want to empower moms to do this job that we love so much. And it doesn't have to be so hard all the time. Um, so I'm super excited to introduce your, uh, your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I call them the feeling friends. And for those of you watching this as a video, you'll see them show up on the screen. You people on the podcast will just have to imagine. Um, but I do. I use stuffed animals to symbolize the emotions. And that's why, uh, like you said, don't think this is just for the kids. Actually, I did. When I started this, I thought the stuffed animals were to teach it to my kids. Yeah. And then I started sharing with other moms and it wasn't clicking and it wasn't clicking. And I pulled in the animals and it they got it. Like yeah. it's so powerful because our emotions respond to story. Yeah. Like if you think about watching a movie, the you you know you're just looking at this little flat screen in front of you but your emotions respond like it's real your emotions really react well to stories and so using the animals to this is anger dragon and to talk about anger as a dragon suddenly that that story pulls your emotions in and it helps you work with them and use them in a different way than you ever had before right so the it feeling friends are- it. instead of it just being this elusive concept it, it makes it real and tangible. Exactly. It's really fun too. So I like Yay. that. <laughs> so the feeling friends, there's actually six total, but the three that I talk, I introduce usually are anger dragon, sadness bear, and fear owl. And they are all emotions that our society has told us are bad. <laughs> you don't want to feel them. <laughs> you don't but- want be angry or sad or afraid and you should get rid of them and we're we're doing much better now like when I was a kid it was just 
don't feel that they're bad. Mm -hmm. Now, what my kids are learning from society is everyone feels these emotions. It's okay. Now let's use these tools to get rid of them. Now let's meditate, take some deep breaths and not feel them anymore, which is a step in the right direction, but it's still not actually recognizing that these guys are our friends and they're there to help us. And when we listen to them and use the messages and the energy that they give us, we can actually respond to the problems that are facing us so much better than if we just try to breathe the emotions away and respond with only using our rational brain. I love that. Uh, For those of you that can hear the airplane, I apologize. (laughs) Cannot control air traffic control. But, um, you know, I think that there is a lot of power in eliminating that story that we aren't supposed to feel whatever, that we should be happy all the time. That's not the human experience. And when we set ourselves up with that expectation, then when we are not happy, we are failing perfectionists united that doesn't feel good (laughs) we don't want to be failing and it isn't a failure to face fear to to experience that and to receive that knowledge and information and and use that and I love the idea especially for my kids like these are your friends they're here to help you in some way and like let's look at that in the positive way and what can we learn here rather than you know this one it's okay if you feel it, but you want to get rid of it as soon as possible and get back to the good feeling. I I like that a lot. Yeah. It's been really powerful for me when I, when this all came together and I, I came up with the, the animals that actually was for me as well, the thing that made it all click. I'd been learning about the uses of emotions and what they do. And it, it was just, I could tell it was useful, but I couldn't make it work in my own life. And then when it all came together, it involved this little guy, Anger Dragon. The idea that Anger is this dragon and his job is to keep us safe. He's he's inside of us and he wakes up and fills us full of energy. You can feel it in your body, in your clenched jaw or your fists or whatever you do when you get angry. You're full of energy. And that energy is there because Anger Dragon has noticed you're in danger and wants to keep you safe. And... The problem is that because none of us got told this or trained in this and we're just told, don't feel anger, breathe the anger away, anger dragon only has one way to try and keep us safe. And that is the most primitive way, which is exactly the right thing if what he's keeping us safe from is, say, a mountain lion. There's a mountain lion in your path. You want to yell. You want to be big. You want to wave your arms, maybe throw things. That's anger dragon showing up to help you stay safe. But when that same thing is that same reaction of yelling and waving your arm shows up when it's your two year old carrying a cup of water over to your computer, it's not appropriate. It's not helping. But we were never taught that anger dragons just trying to keep us safe and that he can help us in that kind of situation, too. Yeah. Because he gives us energy. Like I said, he fills your body full of this energy that we just try to cram in tighter and tighter and not notice and not use. And what I uh, learned to do instead, what clicked for me was when Anger Dragon wakes up and he's filling me full of energy because I feel like I'm in danger. In our normal day-to-day life, that danger is usually danger of judgment, someone judging us, danger of an attack on our self-worth and feeling like a failure, like you said, our perfectionism is a danger. Those are the dangers Anger Dragon is waking up about. And so instead of waving my arms and yelling, uh, I grab all that energy and I actually physically do this gesture. My kids kind of laughed at first and now they're just normal. They grab all the, I grab all the energy and then I push it out of my body. I visualize all that energy that used to be clenching my fists and my jaw, moving out of my body and creating like a bubble or a barrier of some sort around me. And on the outside of that barrier, there's all that judgment, all that perfectionism, all that attack on my self-worth, and it can't get in. And sometimes I visualize anger dragon breathing fire at it, strengthening that barrier with fire that burns it up if it tries to get in. And inside of that bubble, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if 
someone thinks I'm a bad mom because my two-year-old is screaming all day long and I can't make him stop. It doesn't matter if the uh, neighbor down the street is judging us because of the way my kids are dressed when they go outside because I didn't manage their clothing choices today. All of that's on the outside of that barrier. Yeah. And inside, there's just me. I love that, that energy that we've been fighting off is actually so useful. We need it not to not to yell at our kids, but to make that that separation, that space yeah. we need. Absolutely. And to, I mean, what a gift that is to be given that burst of energy. Like we're tired moms, we're working hard. And like, thank you, dragon friend, for bringing all of this energy that I need in this moment to put up that wall and block out whatever it is that is trying to hurt us. And it's usually not a mountain lion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But man, it can feel like it. Um, and so, yeah, I, I love that. I think that's, as that's such a good visualization and it's so appropriate for moms, you know, for the adult who is managing little people, like there is so much judgment and it doesn't matter what you do. You cannot do it right by everyone's standards. So ultimately it, yours are the ones that matter and you need energy, <laughs> like a lot of it to be able to, to protect your family unit and be like, yeah, that's okay. You guys do your thing, but you're outside my bubble. In my bubble, we do it this way. <laughs> um, exactly. I love that. I love the idea. We actually read a dragon book this morning with my five-year-old who's obsessed. And I can I can see that dragon just blowing fire, almost like a forge, like strengthening that that barrier. That's very cool. Yeah, exactly. I used it this morning myself. My 16 month old is teething she was up all night she just wants to be held all the time and I just needed to sit and eat my lunch not bouncing a baby right that second and so she's wandering the kitchen screaming at me because I won't pick her up for 10 minutes while I eat my lunch and I was getting more and more anxious and more and more upset and I remembered oh hello anger dragon grab all that energy of oh I wish she would stop screaming and instead push it in this she's screaming that's her choice she can scream she's not gonna die she can be sad for 10 minutes and inside my bubble I'm gonna eat my lunch and then I will pick her up and be rejuvenated and be ready to cuddle her again and it's so powerful it is and it's so necessary I mean on top of that you in that moment I, I started this by talking about modeling you're showing her that sometimes life gets really busy and hectic and people want you to do things for them, but you have to take care of yourself, even if it's just in the smallest ways. And you're empowering your 16 month old, even now to recognize her needs and put them on the priority list. <laughs> like That's an essential lesson. And you're showing her that even if people are demanding things of you, you are not required to accept their emotions as your own. What an incredible thing to show her just by eating a sandwich. <laughs> you know, there's, there's so, so many layers and it's, it's incredible to, to really test that apart and to see all the value that is in that one interaction. And, and then you get to come back to her refreshed instead of irritated and frustrated and, and you know, spent. It's like, ah, I took care of my body and I'm here for you, little one. And, and that's a beautiful, a beauty too, because they're looking for that reconnection. You know, they, they, they have this relationship with us and the goal is to have a stable attachment to us, a secure attachment to us. And that is formed by those coming together moments. It's by having rupture, even little ones, even, oh, I'm not going to give you that cookie at Target. And they're furious and enraged. And that's okay because our relationship is strong enough to endure the furious and enraged and the no's and the not right now's and we come together again. And that's what creates that secure attachment. And I just love it so much. <laughs> oh, I love that too. I've struggled with with attachment and you know, attached parenting. I love the ideas, but so so many of the superficial discussions don't include that separation piece. And right. I'm like, I'm drowning. I cannot be attached 24 seven to this child. And you do not have to be. There's, so I'm gonna use this opportunity to make something super clear. There's a difference between attachment theory and secure attachment and attachment parenting. They have the same name. Uh, so society tends to conflate the two but you are not required to hold your baby 24 seven 
for them to be attached to you. You are not required to nurse your baby or baby wear your baby or uh, any of the other stipulations that attachment parenting. And I don't even think the original attachment parenting is quite as evangelical as it has become kind of socially. And you can do all of those things. You can hold your baby. You can co-sleep. You can nurse. You can uh, baby wear. You can do those things and that's fine. But you do not have to do those things to have a secure attachment. You have to make eye contact, touch your baby every day, hug, hug them, hold them. Sometimes, not all the time. Meet their needs. If they're hungry, you give them food. They do not care if it's a boob or a bottle. They need food. They need to grow. They need to, to make eye contact. That's a very important thing. You can do that bottle feeding. And you know what else? You cannot do that nursing. You know how many times I've nursed for the 50,000th time today like this? Because <laughs> I'm just yep, tired. I've been there. <laughs> you know, it's great. But the, and the other thing, the, the important thing for secure attachment to recognize is that you only have to get those things right, meeting those cues, making that connection, all of that, 33% of the time, one third, one third. <laughs> the rest of the time you can get it wrong and you will still have a securely attached child. Awesome. So like, <laughs> goodbye perfection. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or a little of the, the anger dragon's energy to be like, if I don't have to be perfect, I'm gonna do the best that I can because I love you to pieces. And right now I'm going to eat my lunch. I'm so, <laughs> so secure in that choice because it is absolutely the right choice in that moment. Yes. And I love how you described that when you, when you talked through the lunch eating scenario and you were like, and then you have the separation and then you come back and you reconnect. And that reconnection piece, um, sadness is actually a huge tool that helps with that. Ooh. Counterintuitive, just like the anger Ooh, being counterintuitively wow. apart. But sadness is job is actually to help us recognize that what is, is different than what we wanted and accept that. That's what sadness does. That's when sadness shows up yeah. is when what is, is not what we wanted. And so if instead of hiding from sadness, we face it and it works really well to use it in conjunction with anger dragon. If you build that barrier, then sadness is free to come up because sadness is vulnerable. Yeah. It's not safe to be sad if you're under attack. Yeah. So if anger dragon makes you safe, then sadness can come up and say, you know what? I don't want my child to want me 24 seven because she's teething. I'm tired. I was up during the night. I, she's heavy. I'm done it's with this. Hard. And I can be sad about that. Yeah. And the power of sadness is that when you face that head on and say, you know, this is hard. I don't like this. Sadness says, I know that's real. That's a real hard thing. Instead of denying it and pushing away, I should be better, you know. No, it's real and it's really hard. Yeah. And once you acknowledge that, it's okay. Yeah. That's the other half of sadness. It's like, oh, this is so hard. And I can be with that and it will be okay. Right. And so after we put up the anchor barrier, if we connect to sadness and say, this is so hard, this is not what I wanted. <sighs> I'm sad and that's okay. And suddenly we have this freedom to be with what is, which is the child who wants me. Right. And I can go out and connect to her because I've, I've made my, my peace with that. Yep. And if we keep fighting the sadness and ignoring it and not letting it come, then instead we just spend the whole time being like, Oh, I have to carry this child and I don't really like it. And, right. and not making that attachment. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I, I think it's so true. Um, sadness is so vulnerable and it's scary to be vulnerable. It's hard. And I love the idea of creating the barrier for yourself so that you can touch into that sadness because, you know, who, I don't know if I've ever heard somebody explain it quite that way, that sadness, we need to reach in and like, let it be. I've heard of, you know, accepting sadness, but, but to really like need it, that's important. I think that's a really powerful message. This is one of our, our fundamental tools of being a human being is that we feel this sadness and we recognize that message we're getting and that's real and that's valid. And so, you know, ensure parenting should is a curse word. So I am on board with that message. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, 
we shouldn't or we should no like this is what is and it's hard and if that isn't appropriate for 2020 I don't know what is (laughs) so true and you're right I can't it boggles my mind that it took me 30 years of life to figure out that these are basic parts of being human that let us deal with the human experience I've spent my entire life thinking that anger and sadness were to be gotten rid of or at best tolerated until they went away on their own Yeah, and not realizing that they actually help us deal with all the garbage that's coming at us all the time. They make us stronger. They do. That's really cool. Even in a state of vulnerability, you have to have strength to be able to access something that feels yucky to accept that as what is and not ignore it or pretend it's not there or try to avoid it. I think that's cool. So what comes Uh, after sadness, Bear? After sadness, fear owl will show up. Okay. And fear, we are just like we're only used to anger in its primitive waving the arms to scare off a mountain lion form. We're only used to fear in its most primitive, ah, something is wrong, sound the alarm form. Mm -hmm. But when fear is actually in its strongest, most helpful form for us, um, not most helpful, the, the something is wrong is a very helpful form, but um, when it's in its form, its day-to-day living form, it's actually much more subtle. Okay. If you think about when you're in a, a dangerous situation, so think about you're driving on the freeway and somebody doesn't check their blind spot and they start to swerve into you. There's this instant where you're afraid, but it's not that overwhelming feeling we think of as fear. Mm-hmm. There, there is that emotion, but you also are putting on the horn, putting on the brake, checking your own blind spot and seeing if you can get over out of their way. You're taking all the appropriate actions mm-hmm. without really thinking about it. You're just moving into action on the right path. Yeah. And that's fear's power. It says there's a danger. Let's make the right choice. Yeah. And so when we've put the danger outside of ourselves and built our little anger barrier with anger dragon and then we've accepted that what we want may not be what is right now and it's not going to happen so that we stop fruitlessly flailing trying to get what we want that's not an option yeah then fear shows up and says oh here's what we can do with what is that will get us closer to what we want here's how i can interact with my baby even though i'm tired um, and she and she wants to cuddle. Well, maybe we can turn on an audiobook so that I have something to help me feel a little more calm or turn on my favorite music and we can sit in a comfy chair and cuddle right. or whatever. He'll give there are so many options at any moment open to us with my my toddler whining at me. I can pick her up, I can turn on the music, I can read her a book, I can try to put her to sleep, I can let her cry. There's a million options open yeah. to me. And we can't consciously think through all of them and make a choice. But when we've got fear out in its proper place, we've built the anger barrier, we've reflected with sadness, we've let go of what's happening with sadness, and then we have fear out come up, it'll just say, oh, clearly the next step is to do this. Just like clearly I'm going to get out of the way of this car. Right. Clearly this is what I'm going to do with my child. And it's not stressful anymore. It's just a clear next step. Yeah, that alertness and that... Um, how do I explain it? It's, it is that almost like a jump, like you don't have time to overanalyze or, um, question it. It's like, this is what I need to do. And it's done. Like, it's very quick. So I guess speed would be a power of fear and certainty, or at least certainty enough that we're going to go for it. And maybe we'll have some other things to do with, like to deal with after that. But this is the path. It's like, it is decided. Yes, <laughs> so exactly. the decision has to be made. We cannot just sit here and do no, nothing. So um, I think that's really cool. I love this team. <laughs> They're amazing. So They're so great. <laughs> that's really cool. I like to think of their superpowers. And um, I, as you were describing fear, I'm, I'm seeing how sadness one of their superpowers is really to combat all the shoulds. It's like, if you let go of all of the shoulds, you shift your focus to what is, and yeah, 
that that isn't what you want, that's going to feel sad, but that's okay. It, it removes that, that laundry list of shoulds, which is so a goal of mine always. Yes. <laughs> that should list is not nice. Um, but yeah, and then you get to get alert and aware and decisive. And that that's a, that's a good trajectory. I like it. I like it a lot. So you said there's six total. So there's those three. And then there's three that are kind of next level that people will work with you to learn about. Do they have names you can share? Yeah, we have um, Shame Dog. Shame Dog cool. is in charge of the shoulds. And, right. Um, so once you've gotten rid of all the shoulds with sadness, then you have to come back into, okay, what what do I want? What do I value? What is important yeah. to me personally? And that's Shame Dog's job. Yeah. And then you have Boredom Turtle, who's in charge of our self-care. Boredom mm-hmm. Turtle will pull you into his shell and not let you out if oh, you're not you taking care of yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so learning how to work with those impulses to take care of ourselves and strengthen ourselves so that we can go back out of the shell and work with people, so important. So Boredom Turtle is great. And then Envy Monkey. Mm-hmm. Envy is um, the you know, the, the traditional negative form of envy is, you know, somebody else has it and I don't, and I'm upset. Yeah. But the positive flip side of that is I see that this is possible and I want it yeah. and I'm inspired. And Envy Monkey is very playful and creative and let's see how I can get it. Let's try this. Let's try this. And so if you can get in touch with Envy Monkey, he can motivate you to move forward and make those changes in your life. I love this. This is so neat <laughs> to harness all of these things that we think of as, as problems and use them to power us forward. That, that is like life hacking 101. I love it. Probably 201 because not 101. <laughs> but wow, this is so exciting. And so when you are working with moms, does that look like one-on-one mentoring? Does that look like classes? Um, I do some of all of them. Okay. Uh, my main focus right now is one-on-one mentoring or I'll do small groups as well. Oh, wow. And so we do training on all of the animals and what their jobs are and how to recognize them. And we go really deep into um, making plans and understanding with our rational brain, what's going on when they show up, because we have, all of us have 30 plus years of habits of what to do when anger shows up. And so we work really hard on making that conscious. Oh, this is why anger is here. This is how I respond to anger and consciously making those changes. And then we do um, coaching where we specifically dive into your specific life, uh, how these show up for you and make uh, like one-on-one that's why I'm focused on mostly the one-on-one or the very small groups yeah. where we just work with one person to say okay this is how your kids are acting this is how your emotions are showing up let's talk about how we can channel those emotions and make it work better for you I love that so much yeah and I think the one-on-one is so valuable because our lives are so unique and having that custom touch uh, and I say this often you know there's nothing wrong with needing a third party. We cannot see our own lives clearly. We all need somebody on the outside who is not swamped with all of the emotional attachment to everything going on in our life to see it clearly and to see the paths that we have kind of blocked because of whatever, because of anger, because of sadness, because of shame. And that I think everybody deserves to have a mentor like that, that can help them to see what they can't see for themselves. I mean, we're, we're humans. We are meant to live in community. We are meant to help each other. We were not meant to be these little isolated creatures on an Island. Like that's not human. (laughs) We need our tribe. We need our people. And I love that you're doing this and you're able to help families with something that affects every aspect of their life. You know, my focus tends to be parenting and relationship, but like this affects obviously that, but it affects your job. It affects your own aspirations. It affects your relationship with your parents, with your brothers and sisters, like 
family drama history, <laughs> you know, your education. I mean, it's everywhere. It's so have you can't escape them. <laughs> you don't want to escape them. How about we learn from them and use them instead? <laughs> like, That's one of my favorite things. I do focus on parenting because I, I have five kids under the age of 10. That's where my energy oh, goes wow. all the oh. time. And so... I focus on that, but it's amazing to me whenever I work with somebody, they come back and they're like, you know, it helped my parenting, but I think it had more of an effect on my marriage or, oh, yeah. but I also went and started a new business that I've always wanted to, or oh, I'm losing weight now that I haven't been able to lose or something like that changes for them when they do this. You're doing really amazing work. I'm, I'm so excited. I met you. <laughs> Dude, this Hi, has been I'm, a great conversation. I'm like, I need to go find all your stuff and read it. Right? <laughs> We're going you. to be fast friends. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you for, so much for coming on here. Um, how can people come to you immediately and like just dive in? Come to my Facebook group. It's called Power Emotions. And I do all kinds of free training there. I just finished up right before Thanksgiving one on um, Fear Owls Forest and how Fear Owl and anxiety show up in our lives and how we can. I need that. <laughs> come see how all the animals show up when we're anxious and how we can help coax them back to the right path because anxiety is crazy. Um, it has been horrid for my anxiety. Like yes, I, I had an anxiety disorder way back when, and I had it for 14 years and then I got rid of it. I was done with it. I had, did not have that. It's been seven years and it's just raging this year. Like, holy moly. So I will literally right now be going into your group <laughs> and um, watching that training or buying it. Yeah. Is it in the group? Yeah, that one's a free training in the group. Okay. There's three videos and they're all called Fear Owls Forest day one, two, and three. So I'm super Check grateful it. for that. So for my listeners, the link will be below for the YouTube folks. The link will be below. Um, I'm going to also attach your group in my group. I can like recommend a group. And I can put you on that list because honestly, I feel like this is something that any person I've ever worked with over the past four years, this would help too. Like it, it, it's that valuable and I'm ecstatic to get to meet you and get to dive into your work and just see where this collaboration leads. I'm, I'm, yes. oh, I'm excited. This has and been such been a involved. wonderful conversation. I can't wait to do more with you because it's been so great. Thank you so much for coming, Allison. And is there anything else that you want to share with, with the, the crew here? Or do you want them to just come join your group and ask their questions there? Yep, that sounds great. Come on um, Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will talk to you again soon. All right. Bye. Bye.